Israel could lose up to $11.5 billion a year if the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement peaks. That's if the EU legislates to boycott all Israeli goods and blocks foreign investment into the state. Is this likely to happen? Well, opinions vary. Israel's government economists say it's hard to predict, but it is possible. Foreign investment into Israel fell to around $6 billion in 2014. That's the same year they launched a deadly offensive on Gaza that killed 1,462 civilians. But by 2016, that figure had doubled to almost $12 billion. What about exports? Washington-based Brookings Institute says consumer boycotts won't drastically affect Israel's economy. But data from the World Bank shows Israel's intermediate exports dropped by nearly $8 billion in that same period. Consumer boycotts work with academic and cultural boycotts. If people refuse to work with Israeli academic institutions for their involvement in, let's say, the strategies behind the use of disproportionate force against the Palestinians, or musicians refuse to perform in Israel in solidarity with the people of Gaza and the West Bank, it gets people talking. Lord Elvis Costello, Lauren Hill, they've all refused to play in Israel. And other artists are openly advocating for BDS. How can I work with any institution complicit in Israeli human rights abuses? These smaller boycotts are supposed to start a chain reaction. Sanctions is the ultimate. That's why it's BDS. S comes at the end. It's, it's no coincidence. Because you need a lot of B and D to reach the S. And it's slowly working. Companies are closing up shop in Israel. Some have been refused lucrative contracts explicitly for their involvement in Israeli occupation projects. Others are speculated to have been pressured by the BDS campaign into submission. But whatever their motives, they've divested from Israel. A UN report has also found 206 companies that are linked to illegal settlements. The company's activities range from banking and telecom to construction and tourism. Their names are being withheld until they've all been contacted. US Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley reportedly threatened the UN Human Rights Council with a cut in funding if the names were to be published. South American states have also disassociated themselves. Venezuela and Bolivia have cut ties with Israel, and Brazil refused to allow former leader of the settler movement, Danny Dayan, to be Israel's ambassador in the country. The communities we established decades ago in the Jordan Valley will be here forever because they are essential for Israel's existence. BDS, more than anything, is impacting brand Israel. I'm less concerned today about any potential economic consequences. It's all about what you think of Israel. And whether you think Israelis are the good guys or the bad guys. Image on the world stage would matter to any country. It's no different for Israel. Many prominent Israelis have claimed BDS is anti-Semitic and even a threat to the existence of Israel itself. We're in the midst of an orchestrated global campaign to delegitimize Israel. Uh, Mr. Assad Abu Khalil, who he knows very well, is a leader of the BDS movement. He writes, the real aim of BDS is to bring down the state of Israel. The objectives of the BDS movement are one, the liberation and the end of this occupation. Number two, the return of refugees to their homes and to their livelihoods. Number three is the end of apartheid and segregation and discrimination against Palestinians inside Israel and everywhere else. Israel has refused all three time and again. The Netanyahu government instead enacted anti-BDS legislation at home and gave covert power to the Ministry of Strategic Affairs to tackle BDS abroad. They successfully lobbied a number of US states to punish supporters of the movement. 24 states have passed laws restricting their business with companies that boycott Israel just in the past two and a half years. And these states are saying, we regard boycotting Israel to be a form of national, religious or ethnic discrimination. It's bigotry and we won't do business with it. The ministry has since established a commando unit ordered to launch campaigns against pro-Palestinian projects. BDS has now been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. At the same time, Israel has banned the members of 20 activist groups from entering the country, including the Jewish Voice for Peace. Although Israel's economy has not been crippled by boycotts and divestments, the movement is having a serious impact on the country's reputation. And we all remember what that did to South Africa. He is the distinguished representative of the Republic of South Africa.